Okay, so this is pretty crazy. Is it just me? Actually, it is probably just me at this point. If I really wanted to estimate it, we're probably looking at around 7 to 10% of the population that is around my age that can stand in the same Toontown statement that I'm about to reveal. And it's unfortunate because I'm about to just glaze all over this anime and this IP, even though I myself, now brace yourself, old heads, even though I myself have only seen the first Terminator. Crazy, I know, I feel like I just led myself down my own judgment day by revealing my own shady, shady secrets. See what I did there? Alright, I'll see myself out. But no, seriously, what an absolute surprise banger that we just got on a random ass Thursday in 2024. Now don't get me wrong, maybe I'm in the minority on this one when it comes to the hype and quality of Netflix anime, so you'll just have to let me know in the comments, anime community. But when it comes to Netflix's newest release in regards to their anime platform, Terminator Dark Zero, an anime that is surprisingly set in the canon universe of the Terminator franchise, which I guess makes sense seeing how that universe's in-universe logic of time travel is a nonsensical shitstorm, and that's coming from someone, like I just mentioned, has not even digested that nonsensical shitstorm, so I guess take that for what it's worth if that ruins my credibility or not. What I'm saying is, is that just in general, it's not to say that I'm outright just not a fan of this franchise because that is definitely not the case. I would just describe my relationship with the Terminator franchise as just meh, or maybe with indifference. And while yes, there is a time and a place where that feeling towards a certain IP or studio would be looked at as a negative outlook from an audience or fan's point of view, don't mistake my feeling of general uninterest for apathy. My pops just really didn't put me on as a wee lad. I feel like in my generation, and I'm sure a lot of people that are watching the video right now are about to be able to relate. We had the prequel trilogy and the Lord of the Rings trilogy as my generation's quote unquote pop culture or Hollywood icons, or even franchises like the Harry Potter universe and the Hunger Games franchise and even Twilight to a lesser extent. And while that might sound like it's pretty shit entertainment from a old heads POV, it was a mixed bag, I'm not gonna lie. But what wasn't a mixed bag was how incredibly epic and gripping this anime was. I said that I wasn't a fan of the Terminator franchise in general, but what I am a fan of is anime. I mean, I just got done with my review of the Suicide Squad Isekai over on HBO Max, that turd of a fucking anime. What a waste of an idea. And because I am an anime fan over here in the West, I am relatively used to the idea of having to do my own homework and basically self-marketing in regards to the anime that I am looking forward to with each and every season, for the exception of some of the biggest titles in the game right now like Demon Slayer, JJK, or My Hero Academia. But I feel like I don't really mind doing so because that's to be expected because I'm consuming media that is not from my home country. And I guess this is where the YouTube comments are actually pretty helpful, because let me tell you, it is unfortunate because I didn't really feel like that was going to be the case from a studio of this caliber, pretty much at the top of the streaming game, and from an IP that is this recognizable, no matter the bad taste that some of the most recent installments might have left in the audience's mouth, would be marketed and promoted as little as your average fucking Jennifer Lopez movie. And I don't really understand why that is the case. The only reason why I myself even stumbled across this newly released anime is because I myself am watching Monster on Netflix. Some of you will know what I'm talking about and some of you will not. But for those of you who do, I mean, come on mates, I'm a pretty seasoned anime watcher at this point as you can see. I mean, with this list, I can pretty much announce myself as an international hero and an international shut-in. I may have gone too far in a few places. But I'm just glad that I was randomly watching something on Netflix for some reason because otherwise I wouldn't have even found this hidden gem of an anime so soon. And I guess this is where the glazing can finally begin. Just like with some of the other movies or TV shows or anime. Just pieces of entertainment really that either one, I really enjoyed or two, I didn't feel like had gotten the flowers that it maybe should have deserved even though that is subjective. I struggled with myself to see if I wanted to include a plot synopsis for Terminator Dark Zero. Ultimately, I decided not to include one because in reality, this is an anime that could go down as not only one of the best of this anime season, but one of the best anime of the year in its entirety. And because of that, this is an anime that I could recommend not only to the most avid anime consumers, but to the generalized and casual audience as a whole because, one, this is a channel of integrity, I'm not one to really exaggerate my opinion, just for the sake of exaggeration. 
And two, you should really go into this incredibly paced 8 episode watch with a clean palette and a recommendation from someone who really loves to show people that there is still real entertainment out there, even from your most beloved IP. You just gotta dig a little, but I am happy to do that homework for you. Terminator Dark Zero is honestly, I feel like, everything this franchise represents and is advertised as from its fandom to its very core. And because I'm a character person to my very core, I obviously have to first mention how incredible the character writing is. This is an anime bursting with engaging characters, not only from the character development and character relatability side of things, but what is even more impressive is that when you take a step back and actually realize from a character pacing aspect of only having 8 episodes for the audience to care about your newly introduced characters without any pre-established ties to the lore or other characters is a feat within itself. A show like The Acolyte with a similar runtime could really take some notes. Not to mention continuing the intelligent elements and the existential crisis questions that one could argue are some of the main themes of the Terminator franchise, themes and questions such as the morality between the relationships between humans and robots. No, not that kind of relationship, you degen. The questions of fate and predestination, the questions of human nature and the constant pursuit of purpose within our own existence, the questions of humanity's own self-destruction, and the question of, is humanity even worth saving in the first place? You know, the real butter-churning questions. And while this anime had the skyscraper-sized task of halfway managing or even trying to course-correct this universe's timeline, without spoilers, I would have to say that this anime introduced what I believe to be one of the more digestible explanations of their own in-universe time travel more than a lot of the other big-name franchises. I'm looking at you, Marvel, you multiverse time-hopping whore <clears throat> Sorry about that. And because I respect this anime, I decided to talk about the characters and the plot and the themes of this anime overall first because, again, integrity. But this is still an anime overall. And for those of you who have been around my channel for a while, you will know that I have been preaching and will continue to die on the hill that most Hollywood IPs should translate their work and source material over to the anime genre. Because man, let me tell you, when you have villains such as the Xenomorph, the Predator, most slasher villains, and in this case, the Terminator, it is just absolutely epic to watch those villains go to work. I mean, the Terminator scenes were awesome. The gore, the creativity of the kills, the action choreography, it was just sheer terror from you being a normal fleshy mammal having to take on an unstoppable killing machine. The action and themes of this anime alone are enough of a cause on their own in order for me to feel confident of my own recommendation, but the fact that this anime could so easily slide into one of my personal top anime of the season as I mentioned before is a pretty incredible feat. And anime success stories like this only add fuel to my fire of how most Hollywood IPs should adapt to this style of media and a limited budget compared to the Hollywood movies nowadays that have the collective GDP of actual real-life countries, this is the way to go about it. And shout out to Netflix, because I haven't seen some of their other animated projects like Castlevania or Beastars that I actually heard was pretty good. Except for Seven Deadly Sins, I have seen that, which I don't really like to admit because of the PTSD grip that that anime holds on me and the community. But Terminator Dark Zero is not only a step in the right direction when it comes to this IP, but just an absolutely engaging, captivating, thought-provoking, and thrilling watch from beginning to end for me and my mates, and an anime that I hope doesn't just get thrown out to the Netflix trash bin after just one season due to viewership and poor marketing from the studio. Wait, maybe I have more in common with the Acolyte fans than I think. Little did I know. So when I'm ranking tier lists, that is still a name in progress. I mean, I'll just let my Annie list do the talking in this instance. I mean, for the tier list itself, this is just cinema on the small screen, obviously. And no lie, I wanted to rate this a 10 out of 10 on my Annie list. And honestly, I feel like this is the first time I had a complaint such as this. But honestly, Terminator Dark Z- What the fuck is going on there? Look at all this fucking... Who's putting all this in the bin? How many portions are you putting in there? How much is in the bin? Look! Look! What the fuck is this? Zero was an anime that could have benefited from a couple more episodes. Maybe say a 10 episode season compared to an 8 episode season that we received. It's weird for how greatly paced this anime was. I do think that the anime could have afforded itself to bake a little bit more in the oven. But maybe that's just coming from a sense that 
I just want more from a personal standpoint of this universe, these characters, and this story. And while the anime did leave an open ending for season 2, its fate is in God's hands now. <clears throat> Netflix. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.